So I have made the decision to commit to a bulk. Okay, I, as you know, started a series and it's called the Summer Sculpt series and the plan was to build some lean muscle mass and shape the body. Now, as someone who is eight months postpartum and breastfeeding, it posed a challenge as to, um, we're not really gaining weight and we were kind of in the gym and my workouts have been going really well but I'm not getting a pump you know that way when you're when you're really like feeling your workouts you just feel everything's full and you just feel like ready to go and I wasn't getting that now I had a long hard look at what I've been doing wrong and concluded that we're not eating enough for someone who's trying to build muscle and breastfeed i.e sustain a whole life out with my own body <laughs> as well so I actually started weighing myself about actually talking about my notes I've weighed myself for a couple of weeks now and my weight has not really shifted like it's went up the tiniest amount as in point of a pound um, and frankly it's not enough for what we're trying to achieve so I decided we're going to properly commit to an official bulk and this actually is inspired by Sophie at Gains by Brains. I absolutely love Sophie. I've met her once in my life years ago, but she's actually doing a series right now and she was talking about bulking and the idea that, um, you know, being grown up in the 90s and the noughties, it was always be the smallest version of yourself, be the tiniest version of yourself, all this kind of thing. And after having a baby, my goal was to get into shape again. And I feel like I've achieved that. I feel like I've lost the excess body fat, I've lost the um, excess weight. I gained about 19 kilo when I was pregnant. Now obviously a lot of that is the baby, it's the placenta, it's your blood volume, it's water, it's so many things. Um, but afterwards I did have obviously excess weight um, and did lose that and I've now obviously like leaned out um, and I feel like this is a good starting position. I look pretty similar to what I did pre-pregnancy but just smaller and the goal is not to be the smallest version of ourselves. It was obviously to lose the body fat and get a starting position, but now it's to be the strongest version of ourselves. It's to be the fittest version of ourselves. And I've decided, I've never really done a bulk, like I've done something kind of bulk-like, um, you know, a few years ago, but I feel like I've got so much more knowledge now with training and nutrition that this is the time to really commit to it and to really see proper results. So, vegan collagen by the way, for the hair, skin and nails, game changer. I will link it down below. Um, so yeah, we're going to commit to growing. And we're aiming to do 12 weeks because that is the length of the challenge that's coming out tomorrow. If you're not on the summer challenge yet, it's literally launching tomorrow on my app. If you are just looking for something that's a structured program, structured meal guides and recipes just kind of take you along the way. And so you just take out all the guesswork and it's literally in front of you, then by all means join. It's the first link in the bio. Um, it works out cheapest option at 27 pence a day. Now I know cost of living in the UK is an absolute joke. But if you are looking for a plan, and you are looking for something to follow over the next 12 weeks, then the link is in my bio. And you can do it either way. You can do it for gaining muscle mass or losing body fat. You can do it whatever your goal is. And you just obviously change up your food. It's not the workouts you change, it's the food that you change. So with that being said, that is start, it's launching tomorrow on Friday the 12th, but we start on Monday. Um, so yeah, if you wanna join in, join in. But my goal with it, I'm gonna be following the workout plan, which is four days per week uh, and four days per week is absolutely plenty um, and it's plenty for my current lifetime situation. I can't go to the gym five times a week and six times a week when I have a baby and Adam's at work so we basically alternate days that we go to the gym so when he comes in from work I go one day, he goes the next day, I go the next day, he goes the next day and that's just how it works out and that's what works for us and I mentioned this on was it my Instagram or something the other day that as much as four days a week is the minimum I want to go having specific days where you have to go 
i.e. get to go um, has made me really stick to it because we kind of had a week or two a few weeks ago where I just my sleep was all over the place I couldn't be bothered I was too tired and going to the gym was like the last thing I wanted to do so when I skipped my day it then meant I didn't go for three days because of just the way we fall into our set days at the gym. So it got me thinking on my stories to say, if you struggle with consistency, if you struggle with like motivation, discipline, anything like that, pick your four days that you're going to the gym. Just say it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever it is, pick your four days, or whether you're doing home workouts or gym workouts, pick the four days. And it's non-negotiable that that is when you do your workouts, that's when you train. It doesn't matter how much sleep you've had, different if you are genuinely ill or you genuinely need a rest. But it's a no excuses effort. Pick your days and say that's when I'm going, it doesn't matter how I feel, it doesn't matter X, Y, Z, that is when we go. And since I've been doing that, um, I'm thinking it's non-negotiable that I go on these days. It's non-negotiable, these are the days that I have the time for myself, one hour, four times a week, to go and do my training. It makes all the difference in the world, because it's very easy when you're like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym four times this week, but if you don't plan which days you're going to go, you could wake up today and go, I'll go tomorrow, I'll go tomorrow, I'll go tomorrow, then how many times do you do that? Did you wake up and decide to join in? So this is what I mean by choosing your day. So today's my gym day. I was up three times last night. I went to bed around 11.30, I woke up at 2, I woke up at 4, and I woke up at 6. <coughs> yeah, because of you! And then I finally got up at 8. Um, yet we have the gym today. I actually feel okay, I do feel okay, but the, honestly when I woke up this morning I thought, absolutely, please no, <laughs> please no. Uh, but we're going, because it's my day, and we're training the legs, and my gym actually has new machines. Like I said, I'm training less today and I do want to record the workout. The only thing, the only thing with filming my workouts in the gym on my camera for YouTube is that I'm going at peak time. So it's really, really busy and obviously I don't want to get people in the background and it's much harder when your camera's like lengthwise um, rather than portrait on your phone. But we'll see what we can do um, because I need to bring workouts back to YouTube and I really want to make this series as informative as possible and so that you can take information from it and think, ah, I know exactly how to do that if I want to do that. Um, so, I'm doing legs today and I want to break down every step of this journey over the next 12 weeks. If you have questions or content recommendations like, okay, I want to see a full grocery haul, I want to see a what eat in a day, I want to see a what eat in a day without protein powder. I know, I know. <laughs> I want to see how you do it with a baby. <laughs> Um, you want to see full length workouts, you want to see the struggles, you want to see physique updates, whatever it is, please comment down below because I want this series to inform you as best as possible. Look, I'm watching Walking Dead and see these noises you're making, you're kind of freaking me out, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie because they make your moany, scary zombie noises. You need to learn to talk, please. Please. Let's see. Mama! Anyway, so this video. I'm going to break down exactly what I'm doing nutrition wise. So let's go take a seat. Let's go take a seat and get a pen and paper out or your notes app on your phone if you need advice on how you would structure your nutrition based on your goals. I touched on it last time in my last video, um, but I really want to break it down as to what I'm going to be doing personally for me. Not to say that's going to work for you in terms of actual macros, in terms of actual specific foods, but to give you a general idea of what to do. Okay, bulk. Putting on muscle mass. So, with a bulk, it sounds extreme and it sounds scary and it sounds like you're just going to get massive and put on loads of body fat. That is not the plan. That's not what we're doing. The goal is to have a slight calorie surplus to allow our body to utilise the energy properly in the gym and to go to growing the muscle. So, Workouts aren't changing. Obviously, we're putting in 110% effort because we're going to have extra calories to be able to do that. So with me, I work out my maintenance calories, which obviously right now isn't the easiest thing to do because I'm breastfeeding, but I can work out a rough number, a rough starting, and then obviously I'm adding on an extra 
couple of hundred because I am breastfeeding and not just trying to build muscle. I'm trying to do both, um, which obviously is going to make it a slightly harder. But if you are someone who isn't breastfeeding and wants to gain muscle mass and minimise the fat gain with that, obviously there will be some. There will be some, but it's fine. It's, it, we can lose the fat afterwards once we've achieved the muscle mass that we're trying to achieve. Essentially, you want to eat slightly over your maintenance now. You can start with an extra 100 calories, an extra 150, an extra 200. I wouldn't go wild at the start because like I said in the last video is if you go too fast too soon and then you plateau, there's nowhere else to go. And if you, if you start off like 300 calories a day over and then you plateau eventually and then you have to bump it up to like 500 calories a day or more and your body doesn't respond in the way you want and actually end up putting on quite a bit of body fat because you've went so far. Um, so, I mean, it depends if you're not fussed about the body fat, then by all means, go wild. But at the same time, I am, I am all about wellness and balance and living a healthy life. So as much as I want to bulk and I want to commit to putting on muscle mass and size, this isn't a, let's just go unhealthy and just eat whatever. <laughs> Let's just eat whatever and just totally disregard the health aspect to it. So I love eating healthy, but I also love eating balanced. You guys know, you know, you know, you know, you know. I live for like the 80-20 rule, rule, and that as long as your, your palate in the day or the week, if you look at it and 80% of it is healthy, whole foods, and then the rest of it is like we treats and bits and bobs here and there, then you're going to be able to sustain a healthy lifestyle much easier versus if you're someone that goes I must eat absolutely healthy 24 7 cut out all the junk cut out all the crap you're eventually going to crash and you're going to give in and you're going to go wild because your cravings have been not you haven't responded to your cravings and thought well I actually craved a bit of chocolate today and instead of having that bit of chocolate you've then like restricted yourself from it and days and days days and days and days go past that you get to a point where you end up binging out on it and you've done way more damage than you would have if you just had that one bit of chocolate. So um, balance is key. I will always advocate balance. I will never say you have to cut out everything, cut out food groups, cut out junk food or whatever. You have to have a balanced diet for it to be long term, for it to be sustainable. That's why girls last so long on their fitness journeys or last so long, the, the ones that you follow online because they are doing it realistically and they're not going absolutely ham, burning out, <laughs> trashing. So nutrition wise for me personally, what I'm going to do is focus on a high protein diet as I always do, but I will be actually tracking what I'm eating loosely just to make sure we are definitely eating enough just with also feeding a human being, trying to make sure we've got milk production in there <laughs> and also obviously building ourselves at the same time. Um, always the priority is to feed the munchkin, but if we can build muscle on top of that at the same time, that would be divine. Uh, aiming for about 120 to 130 grams of protein. Personally, I prefer to have, after that, my highest macronutrient to be carbohydrates. I feel too high a diet of fat just does not sit in my stomach very well. Um, but obviously I eat plenty of healthy fats. I just don't have a higher fat, high protein and low carb diet. I personally prefer high protein, higher carb and slightly less fat, but always at least minimum 50 to 60 grams a day just for obviously hormonal health um, and things like that because that's a female that's a female once you start reducing the fat too too much you're going to start throwing out your periods and your hormones and all the rest of it so first things first is always health it's always wellness it's always taking care of ourselves the best way that we can so I think that's the chat on the nutrition side. I'm going to share meal preps. I'm going to share easy recipes. I'm going to share it all. I'm going to share it all. Um, but I want to know what as you want to see down below. We are actually going to talk through an ab workout right now because I'm training my abs at home because it just works out better for me to train them at home. I'm still not doing like weighted abs or anything yet because we still have a slight ab separation. So I don't want to push that further and obviously weights and doing crunches and things like that are just off the table so we're going to go through an at home ab workout right now core workout core training um that you can do whether you're postpartum or not it doesn't matter it's an at home ab core workout so let's get to it because as much as we're going to bulk up a bit put on a bit of body fat um if you train your abs and your core like a muscle because it is like the rest of your muscles then obviously they're going to hang on longer than 
obviously if you don't train them and you can't see them because you've got more fluff because you've got more fluffs like your hair fluffy 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 <laughs> hair goes hair go of doing some exercises at home is wearing your slipper socks we're leaving them on don't judge don't judge so with at home workouts obviously we're not using any weights you can use weights if you have weights but things I want you to remember as well when it comes to abs okay abs are wonderful abs are great everybody wants abs but it's not healthy for everyone to have abs especially females so for me for example I do not store my body fat massively on my core and more lower body so like my bum and my legs and as a result it's easier for me to see abs <laughs> this lovely angle and um, it's easier for me to see abs at a higher body fat percentage than someone who stores their body fat on their stomach okay and it, there's no point beating around the bush there's no point in me saying i have a challenge it's going to get you abs it's going to get you shredded because it's not realistic for everyone and as much as it would be you know as someone who has had a six pack in the past and who's you know got a, an okay set of abs postpartum right now um it would be so easy for me so easy to be like here's a six week shred and how to get abs and just make all this money lying to people when realistically that's not that's not how it works it's not how it works so never fall for these programs that promise that you'll have six pack abs will some people get six pack abs on programs like that of course they will because they genetically are able to no, I'm not saying it's genetics in that I have done nothing to be able to have abs, but what I'm saying is genetically where my body fat is stored is in my is not in my core, thus I can be 20% body fat, 22% body fat, and still see abdominal muscles, whereas someone else might need to be like 15-16% body fat because they store it in their core and it's harder for them to get that body fat off of there they have to get to a leaner percentage and for females it's not healthy to be too low in a body fat for hormonal reasons obviously your periods and things like that so if you are someone that does store your body fat in your core it's not to say that you can't have abs it's just to say you're probably less likely to have like a shredded six pack versus someone that doesn't store it in their core so just keep that in mind that having abs is not the be all and end all um you know you, you could be the opposite you could have like shredded arms and shredded legs i cannot get shredded legs to save myself because i store my body fat <laughs> in my legs so just keep in mind that abs are largely genetic and with that as well core right now i'm working my core because obviously i had a baby and we're trying to knit it back together because we still have a bit of ab separation like behind the belly button so there's a bit of a gap which obviously weakens the core as well um so for someone who weight trains for someone who trains in the gym having a strong core is important for me to be able to lift heavier weights and also to support my lower back and things like that so yes i'm training my core not necessarily for abs aesthetic reasons but for functional fitness strength reasons and um, so i obviously do have a postpartum guide on my app that is a core recovery guide it's a core recovery guide it's not an ab, an ab guide it's core recovery um so keep that in mind but yes i wanted to touch on that i hope you guys enjoyed this video comment down below what you want to see in this series because we're going to do we're going to give you as much information as possible like i said grocery hauls meal preps protein powder free recipes or full days of eating physique updates challenges pros and cons workouts absolutely everything let me know down below because i want to give it to you but just keep in mind that my challenge launches tomorrow 
So over the weekend you can get yourself sorted. There's a shopping list on there. There's your meal guides, there's your recipes, there's your workouts. You can get yourself familiar with what your next 12 weeks looks like and we start on Monday.